hey my beautiful parents and welcome back to my channel i really really appreciate you clicking and watching once again and i hope that you are enjoying the content um, that is being produced on this channel and um, as always i always wanted to say thank you ever so much for um you know watching so today i wanted to briefly speak about um, things that I wish I had known or understood a bit better um, being a first time mom and one of them being the fact that I wish I had understood uh, breastfeeding a little bit more you know I think we're very much of the notion that you know we become parents and automatically our bodies know what to do and how to do it and it's it's just system all systems go but unfortunately, it's not the case. And I've heard from a lot of uh, parents, I've heard from a lot of mommies that they struggled um, with regard to this. And specifically for me, I wish I had been um, or had understood that I needed to be more vocal and direct about what my feeding plan for my little one was going to be. By that, I mean that um, communicating to the healthcare workers and communicating to the doctor who, you know, didn't really um, delve too much into it and about it, um, about, you know, what was your plan or what is your plan for breastfeeding or not breastfeeding. Um, and also when I got to um, the, the facility, there wasn't really any questions around, uh, do you want to breastfeed? Don't you want to breastfeed? Um, what is going on? And I think there was one nurse who I only saw once. She was in the day shift and she was the only one who spoke to me about it and tried to help me massage the breast and all of that. But in the, I think it was seven days because with C-section, you have to be there for a good week. If I'm not mistaken, it was four years ago. I don't remember clearly, but I was there for quite a few days that there was only one person who really ever, you know, spoke about it. Everybody else just assumed and they brought bottles um and she was fed a bottle in in the nursery because if you know or if you don't um when you have had c-section you've got to lay flat for the first 24 hours and i had to then lay flat for the 24 hours and they usually take the baby uh, straight to the nursery and away from you so that you can focus on on healing and laying on your back because at that point, there's obviously nothing that you can do. But the one thing that I do appreciate is that in the public, um, in the public health, um, you know, facilities, whilst you're lying on your, on your back, they bring the baby for some skin to skin um, so that, you know, there isn't too much time between when the baby is born and the bond that it needs to make with the mom. So I think that's a great thing. And, you know, I think with the private health care systems, they sort of like try and, um bring that level of um, luxury uh, to the facility. Um, but, you know, I think a balance of the two, the luxury as well as, you know, what we need to do in terms of, um, you know, what is necessary after you've given birth, you know, which is one, that bond and second, you know, getting onto the breast as soon as possible needs to sort of like strike a balance. Um, so that's the one thing that I, I, I wish I had I had learned and understood and delved into and had been more vocal about is the breastfeeding element of it. I think looking back now, or maybe it's subsequent to the fact that there's a lot of videos now, you know, of um you know, on this platform on YouTube, um, where parents discuss and you know, lactation specialists discuss like how to do it and all of and how to assist your your um, body and your breast to produce the milk that it needs for your little one and the fact that you should be pumping as often as you can to assist your breast to start making milk is that is another thing that I learned after the fact um, and you know one thing that I really do want to do because we're trying for the second one now is to even if the medical aid doesn't pay for it but to sort of like make a plan and a provision for a lactation specialist to assist me, whether it's after I've been released from the hospital or before or during or whatever, you know, um, is allowed according to the healthcare facility that I will be, I will be in and whatever is best for the journey of mothering. Um, I think it would probably be best to be done 
after the fact whilst you have the child so that you can practically practice um i don't know i didn't breastfeed i've never been to a lactation specialist so i think that's something that will be new for me and that's something that i would really love to delve into and understand and immerse myself completely in um i do think though that i i, I would love to have the milk supply but pump um because i do have to get back to work and i don't want my little one to to sort of like fall off um and as well i'd really love the bond for her or him or whatever god blesses us with <laughs> um to have a bond with their dad because my husband really enjoyed that feeding um that feeding period you know or that you know falling into the feeding schedule because that also helped him to bond with the little one because he didn't have you know anything any other way to do it because he didn't carry the baby so I think that was something that was that helped him to bond with our daughter and I'd love for him to have that again so I think you know doing that through a bottle would definitely be would definitely be an option for us so that's it i wish i had i had delved more into breastfeeding and understood it a little bit better and understood or had a lactation specialist um and had a, a deeper meaningful conversation about it with my gynae as well as my healthcare providers and the institution that i was i was admitted to then uh the uh, second one i think for me that i wish i had learned to understand a bit better um, is um, kids that don't sleep uh, well. I think, you know, each person goes into a journey hoping for the best um, and most uh, seamless and in a la lack of a better word, um, the most perfect uh, uh, circumstances of, you know, having a baby, which is that your baby will sleep through the night, you know, that your baby will love being swaddled um, and that, you know, it's just going to be a transition that is blissful and gloriful. Um, but unfortunately, uh, for me, it wasn't the case with the first one. I don't know how it will be with the second one or the third one or the fourth one. And that's why I'm saying that I've learned now from the first one, but I still want to learn a bit more and have a conversation with, with somebody that understands that a bit better. I'm grateful for the chiropractor that we eventually uh, found and we um, took our little one to uh, that helped us, um, you know, get her to a point where she's now sleeping through the night because for the first three years, we didn't, we, we didn't sleep through the night at all. She wasn't a sleeper. Uh, and the Cairo uh, uh, practice session really assisted us with in terms of that. And apparently, you know, it is meant to assist and they've got techniques that assist um, with regard to non-sleepers and colic babies, which mine was both colic and a non-sleeper. And it would have, you know, I'd heard about it in the beginning, but I'd never really believed that it was something that would work. I was, I was very skeptical of it in the beginning, but eventually when she was three, I was like, okay, we've tried everything. What is the worst that can happen if we took her to the chiropractor? And if it doesn't work, then it's another thing that I know for definite sure doesn't work. And then we can move on to the next one. And luckily for us, the chiropractic surgeon, uh, session um, really helped us um, overcome that uh, um, her not sleeping. So she's slept through the night um, since. And I think, it, you know, besides the fact that on the days on the nights that she's not feeling well or something like that that she she won't but generally from where we were to where we are now she's big she is a sleeper now uh and that also that i wish i had done more research with regards to the techniques that the chiropractors use what options you would have if you had a non-sleeper because we were gaining this information as and when we were going and we were already in it and I think when you're already in it, you're um, more skeptical about, you know, what does and what doesn't work. Whereas if you do your research beforehand and you decide for yourself that, OK, this is the research that I've done. This is um, uh, what a lot of people say works. This is what a lot of people say doesn't work. And then you decide for yourself which ones you would then try to assist yourself 
and what you what first steps you would take in that scenario i think we would have then been at a better point of making a more informed decision but at that point where we were in it we were in the non-sleeping and all of that we were just you know ticking off every single thing and box that either the pediatrician had suggested for us or that you know family members were uh, suggesting to us or that we were reading up um you know so i think if you do research when you're not in the situation you know you do all the research and then you make your short list whereas we were doing research implementing doing research implementing doing research implementing which at the end we implemented the the first thing we found out about <laughs> at the end because we were so skeptical but it is what it is it is the journey it, it's done now there's nothing we can do about it we've gotten to a place now where we understand more um the chiropractic techniques and it worked for our little one and we're at a better place now and i think that is where we would start then with our next one should he or she uh, be a non-sleeper as well uh, and I think a lot of research with regards to like non-sleepers need more uh, love and, and caring. Not that you're not you're not giving your child love, but they love to be carried more. They might not like being swaddled, but they, they, they like to feel like they are near you, they are close to you and all of that. And I think that's the other thing um, that I want to uh, go into as a third point is that I'm definitely going to do a bit more caring um with the with the with the next one and by carrying i mean that you know um you get the carrier whether it's the cloth one or whether it is um i don't know what they call it but yeah carrying your baby <laughs> i'm lack of words but i'm definitely gonna carry my little one a bit more i feel like the cloth carrier or um you know yeah mommy to baby uh, carrier is going to be the best one for me i feel like it it looks i've never tried it it looks more natural and more hugging to the baby and definitely more ergonomic for me and it's a technique that i feel like we've been using throughout humanity that isn't foreign um you know to us or anything like that not that there's anything wrong with the modern carriers and all of that but i just feel that 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 the uh, cloth one for me with the research that i've done and you know the prep that i'm starting to do now going into the second journey is one that i feel would work best for me especially with regards to getting things done around the house because with my first one with my with my daughter it became so difficult that i couldn't even do anything without her crying the second i put her down she would cry so i feel like had i implemented that carrying technique um that it would have been a little bit more easier and I would have been able to do a whole lot more around the house and brush my teeth because believe it or not, um, it got to a point where I couldn't even go brush my teeth without her crying. So in the end, what it, what I ended up doing is that I had her in um, a car seat and then I would then put her next to the sink and, and brush my teeth. And then when I was taking a shower, I would... Um, then we didn't have a glass um, shower door it was an open shower with a curtain and I would literally shower with the curtain open and with her in the car seat um, so that I could at least take a decent shower uh, because even when my husband tried to help and carry and all of that she would cry so I think she was she was very attached to the mom and she was very attached to me, the mom. I am the mom. <laughs> she was very attached to me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I believe that that is how we're engineered as human beings, is that we are caregivers and carriers as humans. We are not, um, you know, made to, you know, ha have your child and then let it be. Because somebody gave me an example is that if you were in the wild, you know as a human you wouldn't have your baby and then leave it there like you would we, we were always engineered to be carriers we've always carried our children and if you look back in history we're always carrying our children we, we always have our children either on our back on our side on our front so i think that is just the humanness of who we are and we as humans in any case when we're even older we are 
um, prone to touch and, 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 you know, connection with people. And it starts from there. You know, that's how we're engineered as humans is my belief. So I'm definitely doing the caring, um, this time around with my little one. And, uh, I'm hoping that that will sort of like soothe them and make them less anxious, um, and, um, less anxiety, you know, so I, I I'm definitely doing the caring. And then, the fourth thing that I wanted to speak about is definitely that, you know, I'm not doing a whole lot of gadgets. <laughs> um, I, I didn't go extremely wild, but I mean, I had a few, you know, non-essential things that I later found out that they were just not working for me. One of them were was the, um, the bottle warmer that you keep on the side of the bed, the electric one. It really curdled the milk for me. Maybe it was the um, milk brand formula that I was using. But it curdled the milk like when I'd wake up in the e in the evenings to bottle feed the baby with this milk that is meant to be to have been kept warm, it would have curdled. So I would end up anyway having to go downstairs. Um, then we're not living on a on a up and downstairs. We're living on one floor. I'd end up having to go to the kitchen and boiling the water and cooling it and making the bottle and so forth. And I find the same uh, is 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 true for the um, bottle warmer bag you know where you put the bottles in the bag and they're meant to keep warm and all of that I even tried a technique where I had them in the bottle bag and then I'd wrap the bottle bag in in a blanket to keep it nice and warm and then in winter I even got to the point where I'd I'd warm um, a bottle warmer like a bead bottle warmer in the microwave and then I'd wrap uh, I'd put it underneath this um a bottle bag and then I'd wrap both of them into um, a, a blanket and I thought that that would help but I mean to the fact that you I'm going to that extent to assist a product that is meant to be doing that organically was um, yeah it was unnecessary <laughs> so I think I've gotten to the point now where I'm like okay that's not working so eventually in the end I realized that okay what's working is an old fashioned uh, um, flask and boiling the water just before you go to bed so that you know it, it's it's cooler by the time um, you have to make the bottle because in the flask the water also cools anyway. But it was warmer or at the perfect temperature throughout the night that I I I that was you know that didn't make me see the need for the bottle warmer. Um, so then I just put the water from the flask into the bottle um i had a tupperware that has the different sections um it was sectioned into four sections where you could put in or measure in the scoops of milk that you needed for each bottle feed and then i put in the water into the bottle empty out this uh, one section of this tupperware and there it was, I had a, a formula bottle ready for my little one. So that's another thing that I wish, you know, I had not gotten or something that I wish I had known that was going to be, you know, so useless um, as a new mom. <laughs> but we live and we learn. And by living and learning, we've learned now. And I think um, this time around, I might get like a bottle maker um, and then implement the flask situation again because that worked absolutely freaking fine <laughs> and it's the simplicity of it i think as well you know sometimes you just need to keep things simple and the simplicity is what makes it um seamless and then i think the other thing that i i, I wish i had done a, a little bit more research on is if you've watched previous videos is colic and i also think it goes back to what i would said about that journey of you know expecting everything to just be fine and it's a good thing to a certain degree i don't think you should be overly stressing yourself in in the process of becoming a, a parent and carrying this human about you know what if they're colic you know and uh, what if they're this what if they but i think it's just uh, informing yourself of if they are, then what are the solutions and not stressing about it or overly fussing about it. But the fact that you just, uh, you know, just have a, an idea and a discussion with 
um, your gynecologist of, you know, if that is the situation, what do you do next? Where do you go? What are the solutions? And I think also medicine is starting to slowly catch up to colic, although there isn't really a great or a definitive explanation of what colic is, um, why kids get it, and what the best method is for, you know, for dealing with it. But there are definitely, you know, uh, ways in which to to deal with it. And I think familiarizing yourself with that and uh, where those um, steps are, where they exist, do they exist with a pediatrician, do they exist with a chiropractor, which is what we found out during the journey, was that chiropractors can also assist with a colleague, um, do they exist in certain over-the-counter medicines, prescription medicines, of which we had tried both? Um, do they exist in, you know, in communities that we live in and, you know, solutions in the in terms of, you know, there are, you know, elderly ladies in, in, in some communities that can rub the colic out. So it's about informing yourself about your space where you are what is available, what what you would like or your path that you will follow should that be the instance for you and your child. I think that's the other, that's the one thing that I wish I had, you know, learned a little bit about because I found out about it in the journey. Like when the child was not sleeping when we got home, I thought, okay, it's just a transition from hospital to home now and that maybe I'm doing something wrong. And then I think after a few weeks, um, if it wasn't two weeks, it was probably a little bit more, is when I realized, okay, something's definitely not right here. And then when we went to the pediatrician for our follow-up, I raised it. And then she was like, no, it seems that it is colic. And some babies get colic. They don't have an explanation for why they get it and how exactly colic exists within a child but they've got these methods and she's the one that started taking us on the steps the first step you know was um you know non-medicinal steps and then i think when we got to the point where that was not working then she started us um you know on prescription uh, meds that sh that she she wrote for us and that wasn't working and then she never mentioned the chiropractor but in our own research we found that it was a method that, you know, could assist. But at the time that we found out about it, she was already outgrowing it per se. And I was also like the same with the sleeping. I was skeptical about it because we had spent so much money at that point that I was like, okay, that's it. We'll just wait for it to go away now and we'll see what happens. Um, and I think also that's the other thing that needs to happen is that communication as well with um healthcare providers you know because that's a, a healthcare um step and solution that is available but she didn't know about it she didn't she you know she'd never really heard about it or suggested it even to us so you know it's just one of those where it's about doing your own research as well and i wish i had done a bit more research on it but i mean if if medical practitioners themselves aren't really aware and clued up about it like how much more an ordinary person like myself and my husband so it was just one of those where we felt like we should have done um a whole lot more research on it and then uh, you know i mentioned obviously the non-sleeper uh baby and all of that but i think i want to throw in an extra one to say that you know techniques like simple techniques like massages that that really help calm a baby or help with gas or um techniques that you know assist with colic like massage techniques that assist with colic that assist with sleeping i think that's another thing that i've i've started delving really into now you know with the second uh you know journey now that we we're, we're planning i think it's something that i really want to start you know learning and understanding because i feel like there's there's healing in touch you know there's healing in learning those techniques and it couldn't hurt really to have a step up on it and understand how to massage babies that's the other thing we needed to learn as part of the colic is that we needed to massage her tummy for the gas and luckily we learned through you know the likes of your youtube doctors and um, the community that was around us at the time and helped us to to learn those techniques of massaging but i definitely like to to learn more about it and and other ways and 
other massages for other things, you know, uh, for the baby to soothe them and all of that. And um, there's nothing wrong with learning and taking in more information. I believe rather have more information than not. I believe. <laughs> and um, I think the, the other thing was I would have loved to have learned about taking care of the stump a bit more, um, the stump, the belly button stump. Um, I think I went into it sort of like with a general idea, you know, and not that anything happened to her stump. Her stump was fine, you know, took care of it, nothing ever happened. But it's just what, when you do more research now and you understand the technicalities of it, the different types of stumps and how they heal and all of that, that's something that I wish I would have, you know, delved into a bit more as a new mom. And I've learned that now and I'm learning as well constantly, you know, because also as parents, you know, as a first time parent, this is a, the first time you're going on to this journey. And I think previously, you know, we used to have systems within communities that helped us to teach, you know, and pass on this information to the next mom. But it seems that more and more that isn't there. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's because, you know, just as a community, there isn't that, that um, you know, there isn't that uh, path of communication anymore, or that maybe the older generation feel like our generation know too much, or we are also giving off vibes of, you know, don't tell me anything. I don't know what it is, but I definitely want to, you know, to learn a bit more about, about that and allow the elders to teach you know, what they know and pass on the information that they know so that I can also do it for my daughter now when she has her little one and she can do it for her children. So it's it's definitely something that I, I want to, you know, learn more about how to take care of that stump. Um, I think the information I have now is, is not general as it was when I had my little one. It's a little bit um, in between. Um, but I definitely want to, to delve into it and know more and understand more and do it better and better and better and better and better with the, with every single child that comes along. And that's the point, I guess, is as humans, we're here to evolve. We're here to grow. We're here to learn. We're here to take in information and take that information and make it better and grow and evolve. You know, we wouldn't be where we are now with the digital platforms we have and everything else around the world if we stood at the same place. So that's just me. I'm just learning. And I think what has ignited it as well is that I've gone back now with us trying for a second one to see, you know, where I feel like I lacked a bit and I could have known more. Um, and I'm, I'm making notes now to go back, to take my mind back and sort of like make notes of all of that, what I wish I knew more, what I feel I did wrong, how I could do it right and better and all of that. And that's good. That's self-reflection. It's something that we should all do because it helps us become a better parent. You know, it helps us to become better people as well. You know, and in everything in life, I feel like you should always constantly grow and in every situation sit and see what did you learn um you know where your weaknesses were in that situation and all of that and then you evolve and you grow from there anyway i've gone into <laughs> a little bit of motivational speaking uh which is not what this channel is really about um but it's just it's just that to become a better parent i feel like you need to motivate yourself and you need to grow that's the most important is growth and information um, and I'd love to see you on the next video. Thank you so, so much for tuning in and for sticking it out this far. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you. Remember, you're an awesome parent. You're doing the best. You're doing the greatest. You are becoming better. You are vested in becoming better. I know that because you're watching this video specifically. Um, and that only speaks and attests to the growth that you are looking for. And if you feel that anybody else could benefit from this video and could benefit um, and grow from this video, please go ahead and share it. And as always, please give this video a thumbs up if you really liked it. And um, please definitely follow the channel or subscribe if you would like to see more content like this. And I do a bit of other content um, like cleaning and the house and stuff like that, because that's also part of our responsibility as parents. So if you'd like content like that, please go ahead and subscribe. And as always, I will see you on the next video. Bye.